Um, first, I want to uh, uh, send our condolence as a city and myself personally to the family who lost the life of their three-year-old child. Um, you know, there's something about innocence. There's something about innocence. And, and sometimes we have discussions and we rationalize things no matter what the subject matter is, but there's something about innocence that just makes all that irrelevant. And I think this is one of those situations along with the situation that happened a little while ago with the five-year-old. And what we're finding is that Clevelanders, based on the cooperation we've been getting so far, not only in this case, but in the previous case with the five-year-old, the Clevelanders believe that people have crossed the line. They believe that they've crossed the line in whatever their issues are and whatever their rationales is in regards to what they do. There is no explanation or no justification for the loss of innocence. And so um, uh, the chief will give you um, more details about not only what we've done in the past and what we're currently doing, but also what he believes there's some recommendations going forward uh, in terms of us operating and functioning as a community to deliver the message to all those, not only who were involved in the, the recent two incidents, but all those people who would even think about doing anything in the future that uh, we believe they crossed the line. All right, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd also like to uh, convey my condolences to the families, uh, uh, of not only uh, Major, uh, but again to Ramon's family. You know, it's uh, it's sad that we're here again, uh, not more than a week and a half after uh, a similar tragedy in our city. And as the mayor stated, uh, it's somewhat comforting that uh, our community uh, has started to step up and and show their displeasure with things that are going on in the city and to assist in bringing those that are responsible uh, to task, uh, to justice for what happened. We have um, been down this road before. We have, as a division and a city, uh, put things in place and, and conducted things that we feel would definitely eradicate, uh, not completely, but um, to tamp down the violence in this city. Uh, we have to do more. We need to do more. And you know, we're we're asking for the public's help in this, uh, and we need the public's help in this. Uh, policing and safety in this city does not happen without our community members out there, and we want to make sure that they understand their important part of this. We want to give them something concrete that they can do um, this weekend, as a matter of fact, to get more involved in what's going on in the city and how we keep our citizens safe. Again, we appreciate the assistance that we've been given so far, uh, especially in these two cases. We still have a lot of work to do, and we want to make sure that the public understands that any information that you may have uh, in any case, any case of violence that happens in the city, uh, we need that information, uh, and if you reach out to your local district station uh, or to uh, police in general, uh, 623-5000, uh, we'll take that information. But this Saturday at 11 a.m., uh, as you know, we convened uh, from the administration uh, back in May uh, an initiative called uh, One Cleveland, uh, where we tried to bring together members of our faith-based community, uh, our community at large, and, and people in general that have a, a stake in what's going on in the city and want to see the city do better and want to see people safe in the city. And we haven't stopped that. So this Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, at the following recreation centers, Zelma George, Cadell, Lonnie Burton, Matt Zone, and Glenville, those meetings will take place where our residents, our partners, people are just concerned about the city, 
and want to be a part of it and want to continue to help make things better can attend those meetings and get further information. The meetings will start again at 11 a.m. this Saturday at Zelma George, Goodell, Matt Zone, Lonnie Burton, and Glenville Recreation Center. We'll have partners there from our Peacemakers Alliance who are an integral part of this, who are out day in and day out trying to make our city safer. Um, our clergy, definitely, uh, our city leaders, our police leaders, and definitely our community leaders. So we want to encourage people to come out to talk about the things that are going on in the city and how we can make it better. Uh, as a side note, uh, the division, uh, along with uh, the people that care about the city, continue to try to do things about violence in the city. Uh, we continue to fulfill our mission to protect and serve, but we can't do it alone. We need the public's help. We want the public's help. And if there is any information on any unsolved crime in this city, give us a call. Uh, you can remain anonymous. We will ensure that you remain anonymous. But we have to keep on this track of making people accountable for things that happen in the city. Thank you. Chief, can you give us an update on the status of the investigation? Uh, the investigation is continuing. Uh, we have a lot of solid leads with the help of people out there uh, that have come forward. Uh, but we know there are, there's more information that can help us tie some of the things together a little better. And we encourage those people to also come forward. Uh, our homicide unit, you can reach them at 623-5464. Any information that you may have, however minute you may think it is, please give our homicide unit a call and give them that information. Uh, the investigation is continuing. Uh, we do have leads, but we need the public's help in tying those leads together. So at this point, can you hazard an educator? At this time, uh, as a lot of these things go, um, there is some preliminary um, information that there is a dispute uh, between different uh, people out there in the community, and tragically, those disputes often end in gunfire, and that's what happened in this case. When you talk about disputes, you're talking about gangs? Uh, we're not positive on gangs. That could be it, uh, but we're further investigating that. Uh, we don't have all the facts. That's why we're asking the public's help in connecting some of the dots. Can you talk about the white Toyota that was found today? We did find a vehicle that we believe may be uh, the suspect vehicle involved in this case. Uh, our crime scene people are processing that vehicle as we speak. And once we either confirm that uh, or rule it out, uh, we'll definitely let you know. But again, uh, that vehicle is uh, very distinctive a white four-door um, foreign car driving around the streets of Cleveland, especially in that neighborhood, and, and we kind of know it's been driving around for a few days, people have to see who was driving that vehicle. So if they can give us a call, even if they you know, don't think it's really important, give us a call and let us know. Chief, any suspects at this point? Uh, we, have some, uh, we have persons of interest. Uh, I can't give those names out right now. Uh, but again, we're developing our case. We need additional information to tie these leads, vehicles, persons together. Are you getting more, you kind of hinted at it a little bit earlier, are you getting more cooperation in this case and in, in Ramon Burnett's case than you are in the normal shootings, homicides that you guys encounter? I, I wouldn't say more in this case, but as the mayor stated earlier, uh, you know, the last couple shootings that we've had, uh, little Ramon and Little Major here, and, and some shootings prior to that, uh, members of the public have come forward to help us in those cases. Uh, we definitely need more people to come forward because there's a, there's a lot that goes into these investigations, and we want to make sure that once we start putting things together and, and starting to close down that investigative process, that we have an airtight case. Two babies in less than two weeks. It's, like it's, it's awesome. terrible. It, it's terrible. And, um, and the people in the city know it's terrible and they feel that way. And, and they voice their concern uh, and, and they voice their displeasure with what's going on. And as the mayor stated, I, I think we're drawing a line in the sand. Uh, the people in this community have drawn a line in the sand and said enough is enough. Chief, what would you say to families who you know, are trying to protect their children? This happened in 
happen in their backyard or their outside playing? This happen in a car in front of their home? What can families do better to protect their kids from something like this? Well, we have to be vigilant. We have to watch out for each other. Uh, again, there are people that knew the perpetrators of this crime were driving around in that vehicle. And, and, and I dare to say people that knew their intentions. And if those people don't make that phone call before this tragedy happens, it, it's almost impossible to prevent. But people need to be vigilant of each other, not just the people that are on your street, but the people in this community as a whole. See, but, but that's, the, that's the tragedy because there's no preparation that you can make for an incident like incident like this unless you just lock yourself away. You know, what happened on Louise Harris Court over, over 40th is just a couple of streets from me. And I have grandchildren who play over in that area all the time, and they could have been there at that moment. So it, it, that's the, the, and I believe that in the public really recognizes this, the challenge of that. And they, uh, the public is, uh, um, says that this is too much. They've crossed the line. And, and they're not pointing fingers at the police. They're actually looking at how can we be of help. And what we want to do is provide them with a, a structure as to how they can do that, but also feel safe because they have to live there and the police don't. So that's what we're attempting to do here. Uh, provide that structure uh, so people can provide information, be safe, but fully recognizing that it's impossible to, in situations like this, if, unless you're just going to lock yourself into your house and do nothing to uh, prevent it. If you knew it was coming, you would be protecting yourself. Do we need more police officers on our streets? Do we need more community-based we, saying, as we, we need, we need, let, let, me, let me point out something. There's no panacea, just like there's no panacea to solutions, there's no panacea to problems. So I'm not going to give you the panacea because that's a political answer. Give me more police as a political answer. Of, let's do this, let's do that. But I will point out some of what I believe are very relevant factors involved in this. And if you go on Facebook and you look at maybe some young people in that area who are in that area where this incident occurred, you would probably find young people with, uh, uh, with assault rifles on Facebook holding them. So the, a factor, how do you have more and more guns that are more and more lethal, they're military grades in, to some extent, in the hands of young, immature people who make decisions based on something that you would consider to be completely irrational. Factor. So you hire as many police as you want. So there's a lot of work to be done and it's a much broader thing than just police. Of course, police need to do their job and they need to do their job correctly and within the, their box. And, and, and of course, uh, they need to be deployed in a way where we identify where there are hot spots of this type of crime occurring. But we also have to have those other longer range things that really deal with uh, the citizenry and, and what it is that is acceptable in the community. And this kind of thing is not acceptable in Cleveland. I'm saying that. The chief is saying that. And we believe, based on these last two incidents, that the community is saying the same thing. So now what we're attempting to do is give them a structure in which they can participate in without putting themselves in jeopardy and in a harm's way. And we believe that they will do that. I know it's a long about answer, but it is, it's, it's not that simple to have more police. Yes. Some of the folks that live in those neighborhoods who are good people and go to work every day, it's hard for them sometimes to come forward, isn't it? Because they yes, do sir. fear for well, well, again, as, a, as I said, I live in that type of neighborhood, and, and I live in a neighborhood where the five year old 
was killed and my grandchildren frequent the same spot in the same yard and those the people of the day. So it, 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 it is difficult. It is difficult. But that's why I say that in the past, people would, the culture would say you should not snitch. And, and, or you, or they figure out a rationale, a street level culture rationale, uh, uh, and that maybe may not make sense to someone else, but a street culture rationale based on their reality as to why they should not be giving them information. But in these last two instances, they, they kind of set that aside. They set that aside to the point that we were able to have some uh, outcome in terms of arrest and charge in a very short period of time. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the young people was arrested right there on the scene while we were there yes. because of information by someone who was there. So, so the public now on, on these two instances are saying that it's too much. The loss of innocent life if and, and uh, someone I think was Grady, who where's Grady? Grady who mentioned to me about uh, something on Facebook that showed the three-year-old being a three-year-old. And you can all put yourself in that in the place of those parents. Right. right. So it, it we as a city and we as a community, we as a, a people cannot accept this. We cannot. And we will not on our end. And, and I'm saying that based on the death of the five-year-old and the three-year-old, that we're seeing the public also take that position. Now, they have to figure out a way that they can be helpful without putting themselves in harm's way. And that is what the chief is attempting to do. Yes? Can I just make qualify, as you say, a political fantasy is suggested. We right. have some thoughts on how Councilman Reed suggested that we take a million dollars from the rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. CPPA President Luna seems to be supportive of this, says this would buy mm -hmm. 2,500 right. uh, uh, overtime shifts for police. And, and, and you, we you targeted them that could make a difference. You qualified your question to say that this probably would be perceived as a political panacea. Right. And so uh, I'll answer your question with your statement that, that, that I am not engaging in something that makes me look good for the moment, knowing that it's not going to have any substantive impact on on the future we have a deep problem here and and we are dealing with this on an everyday basis not just when the opportunity presents itself to have a comment so i'm saying to you that uh we have overtime and the chief controls overtime and and we deploy based on that and to say that uh uh, uh, to the young lady's question about putting more officers on the street with overtime, would that have prevented this child's death? It sounds good, but what is the practical implication of doing that? I do not want another child to die, and if it means that people would think I'm politically incorrect because I don't go along with that, then so be it. But I will put my efforts into those things that I believe will not allow another child to die in Cleveland, even though it may not be politically popular. Anybody else? Chief, those persons of interest, are they in custody? Are they being questioned? Uh, I really don't want to comment on that because there are a lot of things going on uh, in this investigation. Uh, we have a lot of uh, irons in the fire in different locations, different parts of the city, uh, different stages of this, in this investigation. And, you know, we don't want to put too much out there before we have solidified uh, those points. So I don't want to put that out there right now. But can I, can I, can I just uh, kind of piggyback on one statement the mayor made? Uh, you know, guns in this community are a definite problem. Definite. Uh, and that's not just true for Cleveland, that's true all over this country. Uh, half hour after our officers responded, our gang impact officers responded to that scene because they were in another part of the city, they arrested two individuals with weapons no more than four blocks from where this happened. And one individual with drugs. That's eight officers within a half hour of a three-year-old being murdered 
in the same geographical location, two guns off the streets just like that. And that's probably an easy night for those officers in the gang impact unit. And that speaks nothing about our uniformed officers that do the same thing day in and day out. So guns are definitely the problem here. Uh, you know, what the solution is, I don't know. And, and how do we get people to get those guns out of their homes, out of their cars, out of the hands of people that shouldn't have them, and off our streets? That's the question we've been asking here for, you know, the last two years. So that's the issue.